Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Bible and Coffee Time, where we dive into the Word of God together, and my hope is that you leave this video encouraged, or just motivated maybe to get in your Bible, or maybe feel a sense of community. I hope that this video just serves you in the way that God intended it to, whatever that may be. I don't have um, my coffee, but I do have a Celsius, and this is one of the new flavors, so... It was $2.49, <laughs> but I'm going to savor every minute of this, even though I'm going to get so jittery with this, like I'm already talking super fast right now, and I don't have any caffeine in me. Okay, anyways, also, new car. This is my grandmother's car. I'm in Puerto Rico, and I can't open this with my nails. So, obviously, this video is going to be a little more slow, a little more chill. And I would recommend you get a drink, a snack, get your Bible out. If you don't have a Bible, that's okay. I'll put the words up on the screen and we can all follow along together. Okay, so I'm going to start at verse 6 and at 16. And I think what is appropriate right now is for me to read the whole thing. Because if I just stop, I'm going to get ahead of myself. And I think it's just, it's smarter that we go through the whole thing together, and then we talk about different parts, different chunks, and what is speaking to us. So, let me just read this, okay? If you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed, having nothing to do with irrelevant, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness, for while bodily training is of some value, Godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, for to this end we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things, let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hand on you. Practice these things, immerse yourself in them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this. For by so doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Incredible. Just, there's so much in this. And I think that reading the whole thing to start off is maybe good because it gives you kind of like the full picture of what he's saying. <sighs> it's just so good. Okay, so let's start off. What stands out? What stands out? What is the Spirit speaking? We can start at the beginning with this idea of being a good servant of Christ Jesus because it this whole thing obviously is about that and no not once in this does it say it's about perfection. Okay, I need to find the right words. This is very uh I have something very specific that I want to say but it's hard to put into words that I think being a Christian is all about having a relationship with Jesus and it's all about loving God and because you love God you're going to keep his commandments it's not like you're trying to just kind of strive to wait till marriage you're you're going to strive to not get drunk you're going to strive to do all of these things just to be considered good because in so many places in the bible it says that God looks at your heart he looks at your intentions and Although we're not supposed to be, as in James would say, we're not supposed to just hear the word and do nothing about it. We're supposed to act on it. We're supposed to do good with it. But it's also with this whole relational aspect. And so this idea of a good servant, I think we need to make it very clear that it's not for your own sake. It's just like, it's what we should strive to be, but it's not in the way that maybe we would typically think of it. Because you love God, you want to be a good servant of Christ Jesus. And I don't know if any of that made any sense, but I think that it is an important concept when we're thinking about, like, being good because we're not talking about just, like, doing all the right things and, like, going to church once a year and, like, checking off the boxes. Like, being a good servant of Christ Jesus, we can clearly see in First Timothy chapter 4, it's much more than that. It's not just about checking off boxes. It's about 
um, being an example in speech and conduct and love and faith and purity and devoting yourself to reading of scripture and to teaching. And it's just so much more than checking off the boxes, um, which is very contrary to a lot of like church culture or what a lot of people would tell you. It's like, oh, how do you how do you get into heaven? Like, just check off the boxes. Well, how you get into heaven is accepting the Lord inside of your heart and saying, Lord, you are real and I will commit my life to following you because you are just, you are real and you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of my life. You are worthy of the decisions, like everything. God is worthy. And so then from that, you become a good servant of Christ. You try to strive to be a good servant of Christ. Verse 10, one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. For to this end, we toil and we strive because we have our hope set on the living God, who is a savior of all people, especially of those who believe. So from this, you could take away so many things that God is the savior of the world. And even of those who don't believe, like he's waiting for, he is waiting for people to turn to him. He, he is not a God who is kind of just like up in the sky, like, oh, like do whatever, like, I don't want you to be in heaven. No, he is the savior of all people. And he deeply, deeply, deeply wants a relationship with each one of us. Like he created us. It's like, it's like as, as if he was calling like child, like come back to me, come back home. Like talk to me. Like I created you. I know like your deepest, your deepest desires, your deepest fears. Like I know you better than you know yourself. And so from this, we learn that he is a savior of the entire world, but especially of those who believe. And so when we think of this word toil, if you don't know what toil means, it means to kind of put in a lot of work or just do work. I just love it so much because being a Christian is all about picking up your cross daily. It's about denying yourself. It's about trying to seek holiness, which is very, very difficult because of our sin nature, because of our flesh. And so it is like a lot. It is a lot of work and it is like compare it to Jesus dying on the cross and like if you believe that that is the truth and if you believe that God is real and if you believe that God created everything like why wouldn't you why wouldn't you follow him why wouldn't you give your life for him like why wouldn't you devote your life to holiness especially if that's his plan and especially if that plan is embedded with blessings especially if that plan is his design which in the end is going to be better than anything that we could ever imagine and so like this is why we do all the work this is why i get up every day at 5 a.m to read the bible this is why i serve like this is why we toil and we strive because we have our hope set on the living god god is not dead god is alive and that is our hope our hope is in a living god unperishable unchanging ever like it's just the character of god and and it's like if we go back to psalm 42 which like was my lifeline for a long time my tears have been my food night and day um they say to me all the day long where is your god and then these things i remember as i pour out my soul why are you cast down on my soul why are you in turmoil within me hope in god for I shall praise again. And so this hope in God idea is like, in this world, there is not a lot of hope, I don't think. There's a lot of, like, I mean, if you just watch the news daily, it looks like we are going and quickly spiraling down. And there's not a lot of hope. But here, we we do all this work, we toil and we strive because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the savior of all people. I really also like in verse 7 when it says, Have nothing to do with irrelevant, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. And just this this repetition in verse 7, train. Again, in verse 8, training. And then you keep going down. Verse 14, no, 15. And it says practice, train, practice, progress, um, like all of these things implies that walking with God is such a journey and one that does not it does not require perfection um it's something my youth pastor always says and something that just sticks with me um and something that is just like 
always runs through my mind. It's not about perfection, it's about direction. And so training ourselves for godliness as as we are naturally sinful, as our flesh is naturally sinful, training ourselves for godliness is a process. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to be holy. Like, it's a process. And for me, that is super encouraging because it can be very discouraging when you try to be holy, when you try to um, rely on God when you try to walk with God and sometimes you fall and sometimes you fail and sometimes you don't lean on his strength and it's like it's all a process it's literally all a process like relying on God and and trying to be like Jesus because that's what the goal is as a Christian you're trying to be like Jesus and how is Jesus he was holy and that's why we study the gospels because our goal is to be like Jesus in godliness and so I just like how it says, don't waste your time. We're training for godliness here. We're training. We're training. That implies imperfection. And that's okay because our God is sovereign and he knows your heart. And it's not about perfection. And that's why he sent his son to die for our sins. And let me just speak to someone right now who is just so mad at themselves for the sin that they can't stop. Is so mad at themselves for the thing that they did in the past. And who is just, they can't, they're beside themselves. Because, like, God literally, that's why he sent Jesus. It's so easy to fall into the trap that, oh, I've done too much. Oh, like, I'm not worthy of God's love. Oh, like, look at, like, don't look at me, God. Like, I can't even talk to you right now because of how messed up I am. That is the whole reason why he died on the cross. And what the enemy will try to do is whisper in your ear, you've gone too far, like, like this is you're you're too like messed up like did you see what you did back there you can't you think you can go to god no. yes you can go to god and that's the whole reason he sent his son for you so that you could go to him because he knew that we're not going to be perfect so there you go jesus is there you can talk to god also verse 12 a very very popular verse <laughs> let no one despise you for your youth but set the believers an example in speech and conduct and love and faith and purity. And anytime there is the word but in a passage, I always circle it because it means that there's a contrast. It means that something important is coming after it. So it starts, let no one despise you for your youth, but set. And then it's like, it says all that stuff. Um, and obviously that applies to me right now. I might be mistaken, but Timothy is younger and he is like God has called him from a young age. And so Paul is kind of being like, come on, Tim. Like, <laughs> no, no, that's not, that's probably not what he said. Um, <laughs> he's probably like, Timothy, like you have a gift. God has given you a gift. Do not doubt yourself only because you are young. I talked for too long and the camera cut me off, but I'm back. So. I think when you're young and you know Jesus, it can be really crazy, <laughs> wild and crazy. Because part of you thinks, what can I do? Like, I am just young and like, what am I going to do? Like, but that is another lie, guys. That is another lie. Like, you being young has nothing to do with if the Holy Spirit is in you. And if the Holy Spirit is in you, if you accepted Jesus you're good to go. You're good to spread the gospel. There's no need to like, oh, like, I'm just so young. Like, I don't know. Like, no, like you, you, you can like, like God qualifies you. Like the Holy Spirit is in you. You have the helper in you. Like you can do it. And that's not to say that, like, I think I fell into the trap that, oh, I have to like pour out like every single week and like serve, 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 serve. Like it's important when you're younger in your faith, I think, to kind of, there's a song I really like, I'll put it up here, let the ground rest, like, God has planted a seed, it is beautiful, it is wonderful, it is growing, you are watering it, he is, like, you're watering it by getting into the word, you're going to your youth group, like, you're going to church, Ooh, you're filling up, and it's important that you know, like, I, I'm speaking to myself right now, but maybe to someone else it's important that you know like let the ground rest like god is doing something and you don't really have to rush it you don't have to rush it and by rush it i mean 
disciple someone every single week and do this and do this and do this like you are still a youth and it does not disqualify you from spreading the gospel it does not disqualify you from making bible studies on youtube although i believe that lie for so long and that's why there's not a lot of bible studies on my channel because for so long that in me lied to me that oh i'm not qualified to do this excuse me yes i am yes i am god gave me the authority okay he did but that's not to be confused with hastiness because it is very important like when you are young to or always just not to be hasty like really think really meditate and like if god called you to something and you're young like don't be that you're young hold you back from doing it that's all i have to say about that this is also something so huge that i could make a whole other video on at verse 12 when it says let no one despise you for your youth but set your believers an example an example this is just this is a pivotal thing right here because when you declare yourself yes i'm following jesus yes jesus is in my heart yeah i'm a christian like i believe in god like i i just devoted my life i'm devoting my life to uh living for god like when you do that eyes are on you eyes are on you and it's definitely something not to take lightly because because people are watching unbelievers and believers they're watching you in your speech in how how you carry yourself in your conduct in what you wear in in how you love people in your faith in your purity and so people are watching you as a christian and this does not have to be something stressful because if it was something stressful, that would mean that you're trying to, like, put on a show for people and be perfect. Because, again, it's not about perfection. It's about direction. And so you being an example of a Christ follower, of a good servant of Christ Jesus, it doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect and that you have to fool people around you into thinking you're perfect, that you're just this amazing saint. Like, that's not what it's about. It's not about perfection, but you do have to keep in mind, like, people watch you when you're a Christian. People watch what you post. People watch how you do things. And and the, the trick is just letting God transform you and letting that shine. Matthew 5, starting at 14. You are the light of the world, a city set on a hill. It cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Is that a word? <laughs> but on a stand. And it gives light to the whole house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to the Father who is in heaven. And so, like, just how it says, like, you wouldn't light a candle, you wouldn't light a lamp and put it under a blanket. Like, it's going to shine. Like, when you have Christ Jesus in you, it is going to shine out of you. Like, people are going, people can tell just that you changed. People can tell by the way you walk. People can tell. And it's again not because you're perfect. It's not about perfection. Just because you have this new life inside of you, you have this new hope, which is why you toil and you strive. And so people ask you, why would you do all of that? Like, why would you do, why would you devote your life to that? First of all, because it is the truth. Second of all, because you just died on my sin. And third of all, because I have a hope. Like, why wouldn't I do this? Why wouldn't I devote my life to this? Why wouldn't I um, carry out God's plan for my life? Like, why wouldn't I? Um, guys, I didn't even have a lot of my Celsius. This is the Holy Spirit talking. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, right now, I think I'm drinking the Celsius more for the aesthetic because I'm not working out after this. Okay, here we go, guys. I have some more notes. We're not done. I'm not done yet. This is what I... This is just what I love. This is just what I love, okay? Verse... <laughs> verse 14. So good. Do not neglect the gifts you have. In Timothy's case, prophecy. But don't neglect the gifts you have. Like, you got a beautiful voice. Don't be ashamed of that. Like, go and sing to the choir okay like don't neglect your gifts because god i believe that god created each and every one of us with special gifts with special um spirits with special like 
like, I know this girl at my school, and she is just the sweetest girl ever, and she is super quiet and gentle. That's a gift from God. You have people who are able to get in front of people and make them laugh. Gifts, like, gifts of God, like, gifts. They're all gifts. Gifts. Like, we need to use them. And, like, something that I got really frustrated with was... God, what have you gifted me with? Like, I just, I'm ready to go. Like, I will go um, use these gifts. But first, before you go and try to use your gifts, you need to know what gifts you have. And so I think sometimes that requires reflection and time, and that's okay. That's totally fine. Because you want to know, what am I good at? What has God put inside of me that feels right, that feels natural? And you know what? If you haven't found that yet, that's okay. You'll find it. And, and then you also need to know, okay, what am I bad at? What do I struggle with? Because you need to bring that to God before the enemy brings it to you, okay? So you need to know what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, and, and how, how to use your gifts for God to, for him to get the glory, not you. And then how to bring your weaknesses to God and what deeper heart transformation needs to take place for those weaknesses to become a testimony of God's goodness and God's patience and God's faithfulness and God's mercy and how he redeems us. So I think those are the two things because it's not about perfection, it's about direction. Verse 15, when it says, practice these things, immerse yourself in them, reminds me of Psalms 1 verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So that's kind of like like we should be constantly meditating on God's law, immersing ourselves in it, and not and just continuing to practice holiness because it is a practice. And with God's strength and with God's provision, we can achieve that. Um, and also by his grace and sovereignty and salvation and everything, okay? Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress progress baby progress like that that is one of my sayings for the year of 2022 literally progress baby progress like you are making progress like maybe you're not where you want to be but you're not where you were so that's in a song by the way if you want if you really want to know it's in a song progress baby progress like come on like you're not where you were and you're making progress and people will see that progress and again i'm not saying that so that people need to see you people need to see your progress no but it's just naturally what's going to happen people are going to see the change people are going to see the heart transformation i don't know why i'm doing that with my shoulders but people are going to see and they're going to be inspired verse 16 this is just ooh, this is just so good Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. We have another cross-reference, ladies. <laughs> um, where is this one, though? Wait, guys, I'll find it. Oh, it's in the Gospels. That's where it is. Aha. Oh, yeah, you thought. Oh, did I found it? It feels so good to find things in there. So this is in the context of, you know, Jesus talking to his disciples before he was gonna go and get crucified so keep that in mind but also like i i would apply it to like everyday life because i think it is very true um so it's you can read the whole chapter two and then like the whole story and get the full context chapter 21 verses 34 through 36 but watch yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake uh, at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all of these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. And, like, also, this is kind of the time where, like, Jesus was saying to his disciples, like, pray, like, stay awake and pray. Like, we need to pray. Like, I'm going soon. Pray. And then they all fell asleep and Jesus was like, wake up. We need to pray. And, um, actually, I don't think he would say it like that. But, um, (laughs) yeah, so, okay. But that just reminds me of that. Keep close watch on yourself and on the teachings that you constantly need to be monitoring, like, what you're feeding yourself, what you're putting in your heart. Um, And 
it's just like you got to keep a close watch. You got to get some community who's going to keep you to that standard. You got to keep a close watch. I love this word persist. Persist in this. For by so doing, you will save both yourself and the hearers. So let's look up the word persist. Just to, I love looking up words, especially if it's in the Bible. Continue firmly or obstinately in an opinion or a course of action in spite of difficulty, opposition, or failure. See, like, I wouldn't have thought. Like, I would have, but, like, that just gives you a whole other thing. So some synonyms are keep at it, keep going, keep it up. (laughs) Insist, stand one's ground. I like that one. Stay on the course, hammer away, stop at nothing. Now I'm just getting carried away. Persevere, continue, carry on, stick to one's guns. So the opposite of persist which I'll read you the verse again, persist in this, for by so doing you will save both yourself and your hearers. The opposite of persist is to abandon and to stop. And that's what that's what the enemy wants you to do. So you need to hold fast to all of these things. Um, so that's crazy, okay? So, like, I'll show you again the page and, like, what I pointed out, just in case you're curious. So what I took away from this was like progress and persist and just kind of this is how I I journal and like that's the way I connect everything. But I think that that is those are all my notes for the good servant of Christ Jesus. Boom. I'm going to stop it here. This video is probably already really long. And if you're still here, make sure you comment something. And also make sure that you let me know any, um, anything that's on your heart, anything that you took away from this. Let's do final cheers and I can pray for you before you go if you want. You can stay. Okay, cheers. (laughs) Okay. God, I just thank you so much for this person behind the screen. I pray that their heart would just be able to meditate on your word day and night. Thank you so much for just opening our eyes to just your goodness and for showing us all these different things in your word. I pray that they would just continue to have a hunger inside of them to go and to seek and just to know you deeper, God. I just pray that you would you would just place that desire in in their hearts, in the depths of their hearts, that your will would become their desire, that they would just want to follow you with everything that they have. I just thank you so much for this opportunity again. And I pray that wherever they are, that they would be able to stand firm and trust in the Lord and that they would strive to be a good servant of Christ Jesus, not by perfection and not through means of condemnation, but through faith and and just through believing in you and that you would just guide each one of their steps, that that they would just be able to... um, live a life of righteousness and of goodness and of holiness that that we all strive for i pray that you would help us give us your spirit every day give us um encouragement and just thank you so much in jesus name amen okay if you want you can pray for me too um if you want can you um so that's the video It was a pleasure reading with you. I had so much fun. Have an amazing day. Hope your year is starting off really well, really productive, and yes. Okay, bye.